Logan Webb threw six innings of two-run ball, and the San Francisco Giants still found a way to lose on opening day. Welcome into another edition of the Kerry Crowley Show. And if that script sounds familiar, no, it's not 2023 when the offense let him down just about every start. It's 2024 where on opening day, the bullpen let Logan Webb down. But breaking down this Giants game today is not why we are here. In fact, The game took place during my working hours, so I only got to catch a few pitches. I need to catch up on the game later on this evening and perhaps tomorrow before the Giants and the Padres are back at it again as the Giants look to get back in the win column for the first time in 2024. Today, I want to introduce you to Mark DeLucchi, who I'll be working with a little more closely this season, doing a podcast with him, making guest appearances on Mark's show, and uh, really looking forward to all we are uh, set to do this season. Uh, Today, Mark and I break down the opening day roster decision the Giants made. He discusses the fact that Marco Luciano was left off the Giants roster. As you know from my podcast that I did with Roger Munter earlier this week, I really thought that Marco Luciano should have been on the opening day roster. We get into that, touch a little bit on Luis Matos, who we could see here as soon as Friday with Mike Yastrzemski set to go on paternity leave, and Joey Bart on the roster as well. So 161 games left to go. I'm going to go up and catch up on the first game the Giants played this season. Appreciate anyone who's listening to today's show, and I promise you, by the end of the weekend, we will have a full breakdown of the Giants series in San Diego against the Padres. Here's Mark. The Giants opening day roster is set and here to break it all down with me on the Kerry Crowley Show. My friend, Mark DeLuke. Mark, how are you? It's opening day, so pretty good. Yeah, this is exciting. I think that Giants fans have reason to be optimistic about this opening day roster for the first time in a long time. And I said this on my most recent show with Roger Munter, but you know, 2021 was a 107 win season. But in spring training, I don't think anyone expected the Giants to win more than 81 games. And so this year, it feels like they should be in the hunt from the outset. There's genuine excitement over the outside additions. And also the fact that some of these guys internally, you look at Landon Roop being on the opening day roster. Uh, there are players coming through this farm system who can have a huge impact on this season. Yeah, 100 you, percent. You, and you have guys who aren't necessarily on the opening day roster, but the fan base is very excited to see and wants to see. Right. Like Luis Matos and Marco Luciano, obviously the most notable demotions. They both lose out on opening day roster spots. But two guys who had, I think, good overall camps. Again, Luciano had an up and down, but he finished on an upswing offensively. Again, they said they sent him down one to continue working defensively at shortstop. But again, there's still excitement there, right? Like it's something there is something to be said for if you are excited about your triple A roster on opening day, that's probably probably a good sign because if you're not excited about your roster at AAA on opening day well you're probably going to see some of those guys anyway right like it's 162 game season it takes a long time and you know another part and again obviously you don't want to get too caught up in what other teams are in but the fact is the NL West is I mean a really competitive division right now right basically everyone but the Rockies I could see you know there's a scenario where pretty much every team but the Rockies could win 95 games like I think there is a, a way for you to see that fairly easily if things break this way or any other but You got the Dodgers obviously dealing with the Otani situation that just is hanging over things. Like, again, there's a level of distraction there. The Diamondbacks, Eduardo Rodriguez, a a big offseason signing who I loved the deal for, but unless he's on the injured list to start the season. Like, there's, you know, when you look at the other teams, the Giants also, again, because of the way their offseason developed, are kind of coming in with a lot of positive momentum storyline-wise. And you got to think in the clubhouse and locker room is, you know, maybe it's a little tougher having Blake Snell, like, adjust to the locker room on the fly here in spring training but you know that's a pretty big invigoration of energy and upgrade and i gotta think puts uh, you know in terms of like you get the boost of oh the season's about to start and you get the boost of you know we can do this we already think we're a good team now we get even better like i think there's a lot of reasons to believe this team again it's a good team i think it is a i I feel hesitant to say that because i feel like the giants you know there's a level of like mediocrity that kind of has defined them for so many years, but it's like, I look at this, like, yeah, there are no, you know, elite bats, right? Like, I don't think there's any offensive player as good as Matt Chapman is as good as Jorge Soler is. I don't look at them and say, I, these are elite players at their position, at least given what we've seen over the past couple of seasons, but they're good players. And there's a lot of good players on this team. And on the pitching side, we do have a lot of guys.
as I would call elite, right? And like when you have elite pitching, you don't need a lot offensively. This is the Giants recipe we've talked about before, but anyway. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. I'm excited. Well, That's the it, point. I'm excited. And, and it makes you. what we're about to do this season a little more exciting to me because uh, we're going to team up. You've got a, a new website that you've launched and uh, you've got a great team of reporters. I'm going to be contributing a little bit on the video side. So uh, for everyone who listens to, watches the Kerry Crowley show, I know it's mostly myself and then the guest episodes with Roger Munter, but I'm going to be contributing to uh, to Mark's work as well this year. Yeah, going over a Bayside Baseball, we launched on YouTube. We have a little Patreon if, if you want to support a bit more. We'll, we'll have some more sort of extended um, content and things. But yeah, we're, we're trying to, you know, give baseball in the Bay Area some some more broad strokes coverage. Obviously, we'll be talking plenty of Giants. Like Kerry mentioned, he and I will be c- collaborating on a, a weekly Giants podcast every every Monday or so. Um, and But we have a lot of other fun things. There's an interview show we dropped the ad for today, Bayside Chats with Natasha Wellencar, Stephen Risotto, interviewed some Bay Area sports folks that I'm really excited about. There's a, a D and D baseball show that, that I was at the helm of that that's coming out as well. And we've got some other fun things down the pipeline. So it, it's, it's going to be fun. And, and yeah, no, Carrie, I'm, I'm, I mean, we've been talking giants for so long, but we've <laughs> never actually collaborated on something for a prolonged period. Like we've just been, been chatting on the side. So I'm excited to have a thing uh, to, to consistently chat with you and, and keep tabs on where the season goes, because again, there's a lot of interesting stories from the jump, right? Like we got Joey Bart on the opening day yeah. roster. I imagine we have resolution to that in 10 to 15 days, but all you need is one pulled hamstring and that decision gets delayed another 15 days. And, 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 you know, you never know what happens, right? When, whenever a player is on the roster, whenever a player is in the organization, there are opportunities for weird things to happen and opportunities, you know, that they can take advantage of. Right. And so, um, a, a lot of uh, interesting storylines here very early. Yeah, absolutely. I think one of the most interesting to me, Mark, I'll, I'll kind of leave you with this, is Marco Luciano and Luis Matos. I think at some point during this 2024 season, they will both become everyday players for the San Francisco Giants. Matos may force his way into that equation faster than Luciano, although the path seems to be there for Luciano that makes it a little bit easier for him because I don't think the Giants are married to the idea of Nick Ahmed, uh, you know, making 130 starts or playing in 100 games for this team this season. So uh, when do you predict that those guys become the everyday players? Because I, I wouldn't put it past Luciano to be the guy by May 1st. I don't think it'd be out of the question if injury, you know, comes up for Conforto or Slater or Yastrzemski for Matos to be that guy by the middle of May, early June. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. When I look at Matos, I look at an outfield that has five guys with recent injury histories. Yep. Right? And I guess it's really four because Solaire's listed as an outfielder. Yeah, so, Solaire should not bring his so, to the ballpark. So, yeah, you have you have four outfielders right now, all of whom who are solid defensively, who have track records of various offenses. But look, Lee missed the majority, uh, a decent chunk of last season with a broken hand. Now, again, he's been relatively healthy, but he's the most sturdy. But again, like we talked about, Yastrzemski, Conforto, Slater, all have missed a lot of time in recent seasons. So, I mean, again, if we're talking about like a race between the two, I definitely lean toward Matos simply because I, I, the odds are you have three players where if one get or four players where if one gets hurt, Matos is there, right? He's the next man up. Where with Luciano, you know, Ahmed or Tyler Fitzgerald could get hurt and that could open up a spot, but it's really only Ahmed. Like if Fitzgerald get hurt, gets hurt, I still think they might be hesitant to bring up Luciano because unless he's gonna play every day over Ahmed, then you probably don't want you know, you probably just call up a Brett Wisely or another kind of yeah. versatile bench bat to because you don't want to call him up to sit on the bench. I I think it's interesting because with so yeah i'd say with matos i would put the over under at three and a half weeks and part of that's injury part of that is again just because i'm curious how patient they're going to be with all of those guys whether it's yaz slater and conforto again you know the the luxury tax isn't the thing i think the giants are super concerned about but you know slater's only making four million like if they like matos i'm not ruling out that they if he has a decent start to the season, they can swap him to someone else to clear that three million, three, four million off the books because they, they're trying to get under that luxury tax line, right? Like, um, obviously, again, Conforto is a is a different story simply because I don't think there's a team out there that would take salary because yeah. his, his contract's obviously so much larger. Um, but no, there's there's a lot of scenarios I think where where the Giants would find a way to get Matos in the lineup. And again, if Solaire were to get hurt, and again, he has a long injury history, even though he's a DH, that opens up playing time, which makes it easier to get potentially a Luciano or Matos in the lineup. I think Luciano so much hinges on Ahmed, right? Like, obviously, he had a great spring both offensively and defensively. You know, if Ahmed, he doesn't need to be a peak version of himself, right? But if he's a, you know, like an 85-90 weighted runs created hitter and and what he's been historically uh, defensively, I'm not sure if they're that 
pressed to, to, to move Luciano into that position. Like, I think, um, again, like Ahmed was a perfectly solid everyday shortstop in many, for many years in Arizona. And then for the last couple of years tailed off with injury. If he's back to that, I'm not convinced the giants are rushed. I think partially, again, I think the organ, I think, you know, Luciano's prospect helium has dipped over the past couple of years. That's no secret. I think in, that's both in and outside the organization. Um, but I also think again, Luciano got like, there's a lot of prospects in this giant situation that we're talking about who the fans know, cause they debuted last year. But the thing that was weird about last year was they rushed a bunch of guys to the yep. majors. They expedited that development and it was very un orthodox very breaking with their historical trends and again we got wade meckler for example who's on the 40-man roster obviously casey schmidt who, who was in a similar situation again bailey was a guy who i would argue was rushed from the traditional standpoint but he played well enough obviously to earn this everyday job and there's no sort of no question about that at the moment um Luciano was one of those guys. He didn't get that many at bats at AAA, and he, he actually wasn't that great at AAA. Like he was, he was a good player at AA. He had above average overall kind of performance in in the Eastern League. He trended upward, but his overall numbers at the Eastern League weren't necessarily incredibly impressive. At AAA, he was a below average hitter. With the Giants, he was a below average hitter. At the you know, at the off season in winter ball, he's not Arizona in, in in Dominican. He was a below average hitter. Like he like, and he's very young. Like that's not a big deal that's not a panic button thing it's just to say nick ahmed's really good defensively and this giants lineup has length to it right like the only two hitters i look at in this opening day lineup that i say are probably below average hitters is patrick bailey and nick ahmed like yeah. i think there's seven hitters on this team who you say are at least the league average and potentially better than that and so as long as nick ahmed's healthy and playing good defense i don't think you luciano is going to be able to force the issue unless he cuts a strikeout rate to like 20 25 percent triple a and is just crushing pacific coast league pitching now it's the pacific coast league that could happen at any time i kind of thought luciano was going to do that last year and had to pull back a bit because I was surprised that he he seemed to kind of hit a little bit of a speed bump there. So I'm not too worried about Luciano, but I do think his timeline is slower than Matos simply because Matos was a dude who hit his way to the majors. Exactly. Like he started the year at double A, did incredible. He did incredibly at triple A. His time in the majors was somewhat disappointing, but you saw flashes. The strikeout rate didn't spike. The question's always, can he hit the ball hard enough, right? Can he make enough impact contact to be more more than just a okay contact oriented fourth outfielder. Right. And again, we'll see, right? Like the, the, the thing with Matos and the, the difficult thing, the challenge for the giants is there is nothing Luis Matos can do outside the major leagues that will change anyone's perception of him. Really? Right. He's done it at AAA. He's done it at the Arizona fall. He's done it in spring training, but the issue is the home runs in the Pacific coast league, the home runs in, in spring training became flyouts at Oracle park. Right. Yeah. And, or the doubles became singles, the singles became ground outs, all of that stuff. And so ultimately with Matos, the reason I think the timeline sooner, again, not just the injuries also because for the giants, if they want to figure out what they have with him, they have to give him the, they're going to have to give him the at bats at the major league level, unless they are skeptical of it. In which case you send him to AAA, you let him perform really well and you see if you can trade high. I'm, I'm not saying I foresee that as what's happening. I think they view Matos as a, as a potential impact piece, core piece. You also have right Slater and Conforto coming up on free agency. There's also just a long-term roster construction sense it makes sense for Matos to transition into an everyday role but where with Luciano Luciano spending some time at AAA and doing really well would actually boost his value would change perceptions because he hasn't really done that yet yeah, very well said. And uh, for those of you out there who enjoyed this commentary from Mark, this opening day instant reaction to this roster, uh, we're going to be doing a lot of this season, a lot of it this season over at uh, Bayside SF Giants Talk. Uh, all of the good Bayside baseball stuff you will be able to listen to, to support over on Mark's channel. Uh, I can't wait to have Mark on my channel a lot more this season. And uh, we're just going to be talking Giants baseball all season long. By the time you listen to this, the Giants will probably be either 1-0 or 0-1. Hopefully they won't still be playing. Uh, uh, because then they'd burn their entire pitching staff uh, by the time I get this posted. So uh, thanks to everyone. <laughs> already upset with seven options you exactly. have to make on day two. <laughs> exactly. Uh, thanks to everyone who watched this, and we'll have a ton more this season.